Yo, what is good YouTube and welcome back to another JC2K video and in today's video we're going to be ranking the top centers in NBA 2K23 my team here on this tier list. But before we hop into the tier list, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Help me push towards the 9,000 subscriber mark on the channel. I upload every single day, generally multiple videos a day. I would really appreciate it if you do subscribe. But without further ado, let's hop right into it. First things first, we got Clint Capella and I think he actually is one of the most underrated bigs in this game. I legitimately believe he is an A tier card when evolved. The biggest flaw with Clint Capella, in my opinion, is the fact that he is only six foot ten and doesn't have an incredible player build. But once Evo, he's got 79 speed and excel and 88 shot three, 87 midi, 95 standing, 90 driving dunk, 90 interior, 95 block off, catch claim or corner specialist off anchor. Ton of good gold interior badges, bunch of good gold shooting badges as well. He can get bailout, break starter, quick first step added to improve his playmaking badges. He is a really, really good center card. He's got also got one of the best releases in the game for a big man and a couple that with his gold limitless range as well if this card was seven foot he'd be a top two or three center in the game but because he is a couple inches shorter doesn't have that incredible player build i'm still not going to put him s tier but i think clint capella is one of the best budget bigs in the game and i think he really is an amazing card now same thing with tyson chandler another amazing amazing card another guy who's borderline s tiers tyson is similar to clint in his speed and his shooting he's not as good of a shooter but he has a much better player build at seven foot one uh, but he's not as good of a shooter as Clint Capella. You can still have some gold shooting badges to him, but once he's evoed, he still can knock down an open three. Another guy with a very good release for a center as well. Great interior defender, great rebounder. He's going to give you a little bit more size and defense wise, I think, than Clint Capella um, and rebounding as well, just because of his size. But he's not going to be give you as much as a shooter. But either one of these guys, both of these two of the best budget centers in the game, both amazing, amazing cards. Excuse me. Now, Arvidas Sabonis, I'm legitimately putting in detail. I know he can shoot, but his release is not good. That's the that's not the first thing though. I know he's seven foot three, but he's super slow. Like he's super duper crazy slow, and he doesn't have an amazing release. And his size is not as valuable as it used to be. Being seven three, seven three is cool, but it's not seven four, seven five, seven six. And when you match up against guys like D Rob, Kareem, KP, Shaq, etc., who are all over that seven foot seven one range, um, have amazing player builds or really good interior defenders, it's hard to justify using a guy like Arvidas who doesn't have a great release and is incredibly slow. I do think he's one of the worst centers in this list. A bit outdated at this point, and I think he does deserve to be in the D tier. Uh, Brooke Lopez is going to go, we'll put him in B for now. Not an amazing release, but he's a really good interior defender. A little slow, great shooting badges, very good all around player though. Uh, wish his release was a little better, but outside of that, I do think he's a very solid option at the center position. Uh, D Rob's the best center in the game, in my personal opinion right now. I think he's an super easy S tier. Uh, incredible release, great defender, really good rebounder, um, elite size for a center. He's fast, he dunks the ball well, he does everything on the court at a super high level. The best all around center in the game it doesn't surprise me either because i love d-rob cards every year but this one is certainly no different i think he's a pretty easy s tier for me now the next guy on this list is going to be demarcus cousins another guy i think is very solid probably a tier uh he does a couple things at a very high level um i mean the problem with demarcus cousins is honestly a problem similar to clint capella uh, and that is just the fact that he is a bit undersized uh at only six foot ten he's got a better player build than clint but he's not as good of an interior defender uh no half anchor a couple of good half uh badges like catch and shoot box hub east brick wall bully man but decent shooter decent but not amazing release clint also has the better release i would take clint capella over him but he does have mj dribble style for center which is super nice like i said a decent release can stretch the floor pretty decently capable but not next level defender rebounder all those things he's a very good card but i don't think he's an elite next level amazing card so i'm gonna be honest i'm putting him b tier i don't think he gives you what the two guys in a tier do and i think we got too many guys for the s and a tier to put DeMarcus Cousins higher than the uh, B tier, honestly, because I'd take Dwight over. Dwight, similar release to DeMarcus in terms of speed. He's a better defender, better athlete, slightly. Um, not as good of a playmaker, but that's not that crucial at the center position. I think Dwight's going to rebound and defend especially better than DeMarcus, which is really important at the center position. So I think he's an A tier guy and, Dwight, and uh, DeMarcus is B. So yeah, that's what I'm going with. I'm going to put Hakeem in S tier still. I still think he's one of the better centers in my team. I wouldn't have him as a top three center at this point, but I do still think he is a top five center in the game and a very, very good card for sure. Definitely still deserves an S tier spot. Can shoot the ball. Really good defender. Great size great player build really good rebounder really good defender all those things he does at a high level jared allen was one of the best budget centers in the game for a long time and honestly still kind of is especially if you're new to the game he's super cheap and can stretch the floor with good defensive ability but his time has a little bit come with the fact that he doesn't have that many hoff badges at all in fact he's only got one which is like corner specialist but he can shoot the ball with a pretty good release he's a good defender he's just a poor poor man's version of a guy like tyson chandler to be honest um closer to clint capella in size than tyson as well but 
eh, he's not bad. He's just not next level great at this point. So I think C tier is fair. I'm going to put him bead in the, well, we'll, put, we'll put him bead in C tier as well. Um, I think he and Jared are actually on very similar levels. And bead, another good interior defender, guy with good size, can hit open, but not an elite level shooter, not an amazing release either. Um, a little bit slow as well at center, but he's a decent card, just nothing crazy at this point. Um, was a good free center for his time and still isn't horrible, but not an amazing card at this point. I still think Kareem is the second best big in the game after D-Rob probably, at least for most people, I actually have a preference for the next guy, which is KP, but that's also because my KP has a bunch of extra Hall of Fame badges. But Kareem can hit an open three, elite interior defender, really fast for a center. Not gonna do much else besides those three things, but he does actually have a pretty good release and can hit super consistently from three, which is something that people don't really respect and expect from, uh, from Kareem. So one of the best value things that Kareem does do for you is the ability to knock down an open three, in addition to being an elite interior force on both ends. And I do still think he deserves an S tier spot. KP is also going to go S tier for me. I know he's only a diamond. I know he's only got four hops. I know he doesn't have anchor. I know he's seven. Or he's only got 70 something speed, but he's seven three with 70 something speed. His size, his length, his player build, all those things, his glitchy animations really help him out a lot on the defensive end of the court. And the fact that he's got the speed he does with how big he is, is actually really, really good. One of the best couple centers in the game, probably the best value center in the game, or at least right near the top of the list. And again, I think he's definitely an S tier card. For some reason, I got two Yao Mings in this list, but he's going to go D tier. He's not even as good as Taco, and I'll get to Taco here in a little bit, but um, Yao is super tall, but he doesn't do anything. Release is super mid. Can't shoot threes anyway. He's tw literally 25 speed, which is, I mean, be beyond dirt slow. It's literally slow as you can be, and I know he's 7'6", but he's just way too slow. Doesn't do anything on the court besides mash. He's super tall, but who cares? Um, yeah, I think he's a D tier guy. We'll put Patrick Ewing in C tier, and the only reason I'm putting Patrick Ewing in C tier is number one, because he's got a lot of Hall of Fame badges, and number two, because he can get any badge added, which does give him a certain amount of value. But he's 69 speed in Excel. There's only so much you can do when you're that slow. Release is pretty mid as well, even though he can't hit open, but because he is an opal and can get any badge added, that means you can add a lot of badges that he needs to, like Limitless Takeoff, Rise Up, a Limitless Range, a Quick First Step, um, badges like Perimeter Defensive Badges, like Challenger, Clamps, Glove, Pick Dodger. You could add some of those if you want. You could go with a Fast Twitch. There's a lot of flexibility with him in terms of his badges. And he does still have a lot of amazing Hall of Fame badges. So I don't think he's bad enough to be D tier, but I don't think he's a great card. And I think C tier is pretty fair. Ralph Sampson, 7-4 and can hit an open three. That's pretty valuable. He's also, again, not ridiculously slow. Not quite as fast as a guy like KP, but I do still think he's pretty good. Uh, obviously, 60 speed is slow, but it's not 45 speed slow. And he's also bigger than guys like Big Z and Sabonis. Like, don't hate his release. It's pretty similar to Dwight's. He can hit wide open, can get a couple shooting badges added, can get quick first step bailout, break starter added as well. Really good interior defender, especially because of being 7 foot 4 with Hoff Anchor. He's going to be an amazing rebounder. I like Ralph Sampson a lot. One of the more underrated cards in the game. Not a lot of people have him because he's the thousand card collector level reward which most people aren't at, but if you have the card, he can play. Pretty viable option. Uh, Shaq's going to go A tier for me as well. I think he the, the thing about Shaq that's so interesting to me is he is such a dominant interior force that I almost think I can't put him lower than A tier, but for my play style, I'm not sure he is. I need a shooting center. That's just the way I am, but he has incredible interior badges on both ends of the court. Playmaking badges are actually decent. You can upgrade his quick first step, give him bailout and break starter. No point touching his shooting badges because he's never going to shoot for you at all, but he's a dominant, dominant interior force on both ends of the court. Incredible rebounder, incredible interior defender, dunks everything, super fast for a big, just ridiculous animation. He is so good despite not being able to shoot a three, and he's a guy you're legitimately going to see competitively played still that I think I can't put him lower than A tier despite the fact that I don't actually think he's all that bad. Um, I unfortunately think I still kind of have to put Taco in the D tier, but I actually think Taco's not awful. Now, I understand that Taco, similar to Yao, is very, very tall, but very, very slow, but he has a better player build than Yao. He's actually a little bit faster than Yao. He can hit a mid-range at a more consistent level than Yao, especially since I prefer his release to Yao's, and he's got gold anchor at 90 90 interior 97 block at seven foot six like he's not going to get mashed he's going to be a really good rebounder and he's going to be an incredible masher um he's going to give you everything dwight does in the court at a higher level sorry yao gives you on the court at a higher level but I, I just unfortunately can't put him higher than the d tier still but i do still think he's honestly not the worst when it comes to a budget center especially if you play to his strengths being mashing and his incredible size I'm going to put Tim Duncan in the S tier at the center position as well, just like power forward. Again, kind of like a guy like Capella or Dwight, his biggest flaw is going to be the fact that he's a little bit undersized at the center position, being only six foot 11, but he's got 20 Hall of Fame badges, incredible all around stats and badges, a solid release, can shoot the ball well. As a trophy case card, you can upgrade whatever badges you want to as high a tier as you want. Same thing with adding whatever badges you'd like to him. So still does a ton of things really well, and I do think he does deserve to be our final S tier player. Going to be putting Wilt in the D tier. Um... He's only seven foot. I mean, 
he's he's got a good very good player though in eight foot wingspan but he is the He's an inside like Shaq, but he's not dominant the way that Shaq is. He's not as fast as Shaq. He doesn't have nearly as many badges as Shaq. He's not as versatile as Shaq. He doesn't get as good animations as Shaq. He's just not that good anymore, unfortunately. But hey, once we get a new Wilt, I'm sure he'll be an amazing card. And then finally, Big Z. And in all honesty, Big Z is better than an Arvidas Sabonis. Is he better than... You know, I'm actually going to put Big Z in C tier still. I still think even though he is like 12 speed, I mean, he's still incredibly slow. 44 speed Nick Sale. He's got a much, much better release than Sabonis and also has Hoff Anchor, Hoff Box Out Beast, Hoff Brick Wall. So having a much better release and much better interior badges is enough for me to put Big C a tier higher than Sabonis because he's going to be much more reliable as a shooter off the pick and pop with one of the best releases in the game for a big man. Still as a trophy case player, can get whatever badges you'd like added. Things like Limitless Range, Bailout, um, Defensive Badges as well, like a Pogo Stick and things of that nature. So um, I do think Big Z is still kind of sort of viable because of how good his size is and how good of a shooter he is but his speed does still hurt him and i wouldn't really highly recommend using the card but this is my ranking right now of the best centers in my team i feel like when you go with guys who are like b tier and above you're looking at like really elite cards and then it kind of drops off relatively significantly around the c tier especially the last couple guys in c tier and the d tier but that is okay um I still think we got a lot of good cards at the center position, including a lot of good budget guys. Guys like KP, Clint Capella, Tyson Chandler, even a Jared Allen, a bunch of free centers as well, like Tim Duncan, um, DeMarcus Cousins, Ralph Sampson, Brooke Lopez, all those guys. So a lot of value at the center position. Would love to hear your thoughts in the center position right now, what centers you're using. And also, if there's anybody I left off the list that you'd like to hear my opinion on at that center position, feel free to leave a comment about that as well and let me know. But if you did enjoy the video, make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe, and I'll be back with more 2K content very, very soon. I appreciate y'all. Peace.